All right, today's lesson is the last one of this first chapter, and it's on inverse functions. And we're going to figure out what an inverse function is, how we can figure out the equation, and what the graph would look like, and so on. But you can see on this title page, if the red graph is our original f of x, you can see the inverse ends up being the blue one, the f to the negative 1 of x. We call that the inverse. We'll get to that in a minute. And you can see from the picture, it looks like it's a, right, a diagonal reflection. The dotted line would be sort of our diagonal line. You can see it ends up being a reflection, kind of like that. So let's figure out how we're going to deal with these. So first of all, we're going to call an inverse function f to the negative 1. So we write it like that instead of some other notation. Key thing to remember is the negative 1 is not an exponent. So it's not like something like x squared or x to the negative 3 because f, we're dealing with a function, not a variable like x or y or anything like that. So what you want to think of it is it's sort of like when you, on your calculator, if you go second sine, you do the inverse of sine x, which means you're sort of reversing or doing the opposite of sine. So the same thing applies for inverse functions. In terms of a graph, what happens is when we do an inverse, our x and y coordinates trade. So whatever our x coordinate was, so let's suppose we had a point at 3, Four, when we do the inverse, our new coordinate ends up becoming 4, 3. So because we're just trading coordinates, what happens is our graph ends up being a diagonal reflection. So let's go back to the title page. So we can see that any particular coordinate here, so this coordinate, this, let's start with this red one. This red one's at 1, 0. So when we do the reflection, it ends up becoming 0, 1. So you can see it's the coordinates just trade. This one here is at 2, 2. So you can see on the reflection, it still would be 2, 2, so it ends up becoming an invariant point. And the same thing down here. You can see we've got invariant points down here and any other coordinates. So if we picked one somewhere in the other location, so like somewhere down here, this would be like negative 2.5. And about negative 1, 2, 3, 3.25 or something like that. So our reflection then should be the reverse. It'll be negative 3.25 and then negative 2.5. So all of the coordinates just trade places, so that makes the graph fairly easy to draw. And all we really have to keep track with that is it's always going to be a diagonal reflection. So it's in the line y equals x, so it would just be a perfect diagonal line and our functions then would just be the reflection across that line. So let's do a simple one. If I gave you like y equals x squared, it would be a quadratic like that. So when we do our reflection, it would look like a sideways parabola, something like that. Okay. In terms of the notation, one thing that's sort of important is we can think of our equation just sort of being reversed. So if our original was y equals f of x, then the inverse would be x equals f of y. We just trade the x and y letters in the equation as well, and that'll work as well. So the first step that we're going to figure out is how do we figure out the new equation. So if you get an original equation, what we have to do then is follow these steps to switch it. So let's start with one that's pretty easy. So let's do y equals, or sorry, let's do f of x so we get all our different steps involved. So let's suppose the original function I give you is f of x equals 3x minus 4. So we'll stick with an easy straight line. So the first step you want to do then is change the f of x to y. So we want to make it as y equals 3x minus 4. So that's our new equation we're going to work with. Then what we want to do is flip our x and y. If our x and y coordinates are going to trade, then our x and y letters in the equation will also trade. So that's good. Now what we want to do is solve that equation to get it to be y equals. So if we switch these around, so we bring the 4 to the other side, so that will give us x plus 4 equals 3y. And then the last thing we do is divide by 3. So we could rearrange this as y equals x plus 4 over 3. We could write it as one fraction, or we could write it as x over 3 plus 4 over 3. A couple different ways of doing it. So then our last step is, instead of it being y equals, we've actually figured out the inverse. So just change it back to f minus 1x, and write your new equation to 3, 4 over 3. 
And that's it. So we, if we graphed our original, the 3x minus 4, and we graph this new one, we should get inverses of each other. Okay, so let's, if we were to look at this, so 3x minus 4 would be a graph that would be something like that. So if we had our dotted line, it would be somewhere in there. And if we graph, if we graph x over 3 plus 4 thirds, it would end up being... So I'll do it in a different color. You can just plug these on your calculator if you're not sure what the graph would look like. But it would end up being you know, something kind of like that. So you can see that it would actually be a diagonal reflection of each other. Okay, so here's another example. So our original is 3 fifths x minus 3. So first step, change it to y equals. Flip your x and y's around. <coughs> and then we want to solve it for y. So bring the 3 over. Oh, there's a mistake on here. So we have 3 fifths x minus 3. We bring the 3 over, so that'd make it plus 3. And then that'd be 3 fifths y. So our reverse would be to times it by 5 thirds. So we should have 5 thirds times x plus 3. So our y would equal 5 thirds x plus 3. Or we could even multiply it out if we want. We can make it 5 thirds x um, plus 5, what it would end up being. And then our last step is change it back to f inverse. So we'd have 5 thirds x plus 5 f inverse of x. And that's it. So pretty easy mathematically to do these switching, and, uh, and that's it. The only thing... Okay, one thing we got to be careful of with inverse graphs and functions is whether they're actually going to be a function or not. If you think back to uh, grade 10, you did these kind of things where if we had a function, doesn't matter what the graph is, if we draw a vertical line anywhere through it, if it only ever touches in one spot, then we'd say it is a function. So something like that would be a function, but if we had a sideways kind of curve, in this case if we draw a vertical line, then we'd say it's not a function. So quite often a lot of inverse functions will technically be not be a function because they would fail this vertical line test. So what we have to do sometimes is restrict the domain and range or when we look at part of the graph in order to to get this done right. So let's try Let's try a different question here. So let's do a simple one. Let's do um, y equals x squared. If that's our original, or f of x equals x squared. So we'd have y equals x squared. We would trade our letters around. So that'd be x equals y squared. And then we'd solve it for y. So our answer should be square root of x equals y. So our inverse function then would be square root of x. So if we were to try to graph that, like if we graph our original, y equals x squared, we know it's just our quadratic. So on your calculator, if you graph y equals square root of x, it actually just gives you half a curve, something like that. But we know that because it's a vertical reflection, or a diagonal reflection, we should get sort of a sideways U-shape for our reflection. So where is that other part? Like how come it's not showing up? And this usually typically shows up quite often when you have square roots, and you just got to remember that when we actually square root something, so when we do square root of x, we actually get, we could do the positive or the negative version, right? Because 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is also 4, so we actually have to take care of those two graphs. So technically our inverse function then would be the plus and the negative. So if we graph the plus root x, we'd get the top part. If we graph the negative root x, we'd actually get the bottom part, which would be technically the whole inverse. The problem is this blue graph now is actually not a function. So quite often what we do is we will split the graph up and only look at part of it. So for that I mean like let's suppose our original is our y equals x squared, but let's suppose we only looked at the positive part. If we said our domain went from 0 to infinity, so we'll just say uh, x is greater than 0. x is greater than 0, and our range in this case would be y is greater than 0 as well. 
Okay, so now if we're only going to be looking at the positive part of the graph, then we won't worry about the negative part. And therefore, our positive part would just be the positive part of the reflection as well. So we wouldn't have to worry about the negative part. So then we would just get our inverse being just the positive of the root x. And our domain and range then would flip. So because our x and y's are flipping, our domain and range flips. But in this case, because they're both greater than 0, nothing really changes. If we had, let's suppose for whatever reason, our original graph let me just kind of resketch it here quick. So if our original graph was a quadratic that started at, say, 3, it went up something like that. So when we do our reflection, our inverse, or our diagonal reflection, it would actually be 3 this way. So then for that one, our original domain and range would be domain is greater than 0. Our range would be greater than 3. Then when we do our inverse, it's the, it's the opposite. Our domain would be greater than 3, and our range would be greater than 0. Okay, so that's all this last part is saying, is sometimes we have to do a restriction on domain or range if we want to keep them functions, and if that happens, our domain and range just trade when we do our, our inverse part of the equation. Okay, so let's do an example from start to finish. We're going to look at how to get the equation, how to get the graphs, everything. So here's our original, so let's go through the steps again. So step one is change it to y equals... So x plus 3 squared minus 1. Then we're going to trade our x and y around. So it'll be x equals y plus 3 squared minus 1. Now we want to solve it for y. So let's bring the 1 over. Then we're going to square root it. Right? We want to get rid of the squared. So we're going to have square root of x plus 1. But because, remember, we're square rooting, we've got to remember we can get the positive and the negative version. And then the last step would be get rid of the 3. So we'd have root of x plus 1 minus 3 equals y. And then remember our last step is just write it as an inverse. So f inverse would be plus or minus x plus 1 rooted minus 3. So that should be our final equation. Okay, so let's draw the graph of the original and the inverse. So the original, let me just go back, it was x plus 3 squared minus 1. And our inverse was root x plus 1 minus 3. So plus or minus root x plus 1 minus 3. So there's our two graphs, so let's draw them both. So you can just type these in on your calculator, that's the easiest way if you want. And we get, I'm just going to quickly sketch it here. So our original would be a quadratic, something like that. So if we had x of 0, that would give us 9 minus 1 would be 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's kind of up here. So we should get our original. Oops, it's not very good. Let me fix that. <clears throat> so we should have a quadratic, something like that. <clears throat> so now, if we're going to put these on your calculator to graph, what we got to do is graph the positive root. So we're going to actually do these as two separate equations. So you type in y equals positive root x plus 1 minus 3. And then you'd have to do negative root x plus 1 minus 3, and you should be good. So the first one, we would have, remember, this is just a diagonal reflection, right? So it's going to be reflected diagonally. So this vertex here that was at negative 3, one, negative 1, is actually going to change from negative 1 to negative 3. So it's going to end up being there. So that'll help. And But like I said, if we just graph these on your calculator, plug it in, and we'd get uh, the graph to do something like this. So we do positive root x plus 1 minus 3. We would do something like that. Then if we do the negative, it would give us the other side, and we're good. So there's the original. There's the inverse in terms of graph and in terms of the equation. So is the, is the inverse a function? Let's go back to the picture here. 
Is the inverse a function? No, because if we did a vertical line, our vertical line would touch it in two spots, so it's not a function. Divide the inverse into two branches, one's positive, one negative. Let's find the domain and range for each. And then we want to figure out what the domain and range of the original would be. So basically what we want to do, let's go back to the picture here again. So if our original is has a horizontal line that would cross in two spots, then that means I would inverse it into a vertical line to not be a function. So what we want to do is if we want to keep these things both functions, we want to split the original so we'd only have a positive and a negative version. And then, then that means our our, our inverses will only be positive or negative as well. So if you look at that on our graph, the vertex was at negative 3. So really all we have to do then for the original is we want our domain to be either greater than negative 3 or less than negative 3. And then let's go back to the graph again. So that'll split it there. Our y coordinate was at negative 1. So same thing, if we want it to be greater than negative 3, then our graph is going to be greater than negative 1. So let's go back to here. So our range would be greater than negative 1. And or if we did the negative part, then our range would be from negative 3, it's still greater than negative 1, so that didn't change. Okay, so that's good. So then now, Let's compare that to the the inverse. If we go back to the picture again, so the positive graph, so this this graph here, is going to reflect into this part. So that means our domain then would be x is greater than negative one, and our y is greater than negative three. So our new one, we'd have x is greater than negative one, y is greater than negative three. So if you look at how the domain and range compare, they're the exact same numbers, but the x and y is flipped, which makes sense. Then if we do the negative version, you can see from the graph, our negative version, we want still x is greater than negative 1, but now our y is less than negative 3. So it would be the same thing. x is greater than negative 1, y is less than negative 3, and once again, you can see they're just the opposite of that. So anytime, if, if it is picky or they restrict the domain and range, then obviously your inverse was going to have a restricted domain and range as well to match whatever the original would be. Okay, so this one was graph the restricted positive and the, the inverse. So I won't bother redoing it, but we had negative 3, negative 1, so we had our positive, something like that. So then our inverse changed to something like that if we did the positive and then if we graph the negative version it went up something like that so then our inverse would be the reverse something like that so in terms of graphs just always sort of keep in mind the diagonal reflection idea and then remember that all your coordinates reverse so if the original coordinate is negative 3 negative 1 the inverse will be negative 1 negative 3 they just trade trade the x and y around and that's all